Well, I'll try to make it uh, uh, concise and, and short enough. Uh, I did lose a lot of uh, pictures uh, in the last few years, but uh, I just think one thing I want to make clear, uh, yeah, I did uh, retire as a Lieutenant Navy, but I wasn't also in the regular as a, with the engineers. I retired after 25 years uh, as a Sergeant Major, a Master Warrant Officer, uh, and then I continued on for a few years later, I, I, the cadets got me into uh, uniform. Uh, I've been in uniform since uh, age 12, actually. So on continuing, uh, I, uh, after my uh, term of service, I uh, wanted to give back to the, uh, the community. I, I joined the, uh, 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 the Naval Reserve Group uh, with the CIC, as a CIC officer. And, and then I worked through the, uh, the supply officer, the instructional officer, naval officer, all the way up to commanding officer. So that, that took another 10 years. So uh, while I was uh, doing uh, all types of uh, uh, work for the association uh, in Calgary, uh, so I've been with the UN War Group for about 30 years. So yeah. I was a webmaster as well in Calgary. So I. So there was a there's a lot of pro pro and paramilitary association that is uh, still still with these days. So today um, I wanted to talk about uh, the uh, my uh, mission in uh, ex Yugoslavia, the UNPRO four Un United Nations Protection Force. As you can see, the name the uh, the name of the uh, operation was Up Harmony Road Two Five, which was the fifth group that. Uh, went into ex Yugoslavia, so six months, uh, uh, six months tour. Um, but uh, as you can see, my term was only four months. So I'll go through why it took four months. So, so let me take you back to May uh, 95, where I uh, got the warning order from my CO and said that uh, I would be uh, the next guy uh, heading out to Yugoslavia uh, to head up uh, uh, for the, uh, perhaps for the last rotation because the uh, UN decided that uh, uh, the NATO would end uh, uh, December 15 uh, and the, the Canadian government would not uh, continue uh, with the United Nations members um, so we were not sure I was not sure uh, if we were going for either three months six months or 12 months uh, most likely, my uh, CEO said, well, I think it's going to be the 12 months. I said, okay, so we, um, and NATO would take over the operations afterwards. Um, I was the, uh, the sergeant major, uh, the troop commander, or the boss beaver, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with me, I had a group of uh, 15 technicians. Um, I had um, uh, uh, structural technician, plumber gas fitters, uh, refrigeration technician, uh, electronic generation system technicians, water sanitation uh, and POL technician, heavy equipment operators, firefighter, a supply officer, a supply technician, and also translator with me, with my group. So it was quite a bit of uh, uh, quite a bit of challenge because uh, all of these uh, technicians were from where I was, which was Edmonton. Uh, we were attached to the uh, one service battalion uh, and uh, we had to join the service battalion in Calgary. So we were in, I was in Edmonton then. So we moved to, uh, to, to Calgary for the next six weeks on training. So that was quite uh, something different because uh, uh, it's been, it was quite a while since I've been either on a NATO or UN mission. So uh, by, by now, by then, it was... Uh, uh, full force uh, in indoctrination, uh, knowing the country, uh, see what's all about, and of course, uh, it was always in the news. So we did have uh, we did have our, uh, our uh, while we were doing our training, uh, our little Bible here, um, and we had to learn all the facets of all the the countries that was uh, involved in to Yugoslavia, which now the ex Yugoslavia. So there was. Uh, Seven countries: uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia Herzegovina, Montenegro, Kosovo, Macedonia, and Serbia. So we uh, it was quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of uh, landscape, uh, all mountainous areas. 
Uh, not only not only that there were seven, but there was also factions. Uh, you can see the, the ethnic divisions. So we're looking at uh, two, four, six, eight, eight nine factions. Uh, uh, can't you see too clearly here, but uh, you got Croats, Muslims, Slovenians, uh, Albanians, Hungarians, Bulgarians, uh, Serbs. So we needed to know. Um, what everybody was basically at least the major force so air force navy army all the tanks all the planes all the boats and our um our camp was uh was right close to here and split so Pramushtan is that little island there so we were in this area here so we needed to know all of that stuff. So it was quite, quite drastic, uh, specifically where every week we <laughs> drive down to Calgary and do our training and back up uh, after, uh, after the, week the training was done. So that was quite something. Um, you know, if we've forgotten anything, I'm not sure if anybody ever seen this, the Warrior Book. I was given to all of the, uh, the members. <coughs> All the members, uh, if you've forgotten how to load a rifle, um, different types of rifle, different type of aircrafts, uh, mines, uh, so on and so forth, it was all in there. Um, and surprisingly enough, um, as the, the, the chief engineer there, they were, they were taking me as a, uh, I knew all the mines. Well, I don't know all the mines. <laughs> I was not a field engineer. So they would always come to me and say, well, you know, we're thinking we get some mines in this area here. So, well, I had a friend uh, that was in Biatch. Uh, he was the only guy left there. And he was uh, the uh, uh, dealing with the locals uh, about locations where the mines. So there was an exchange there uh, for some reason. And uh, the mines, uh, I had a look um, recently. Uh, there was, uh, how, many, how many mines? There was, uh, Seven, seven million mines that were installed in uh, the border of Croatia and, and uh, Bosnia. Uh, up to today, there's still 17,000 that still haven't been recovered yet. So we still have some engineer groups uh, from different countries uh, out uh, to uh, ex Yugoslavia, now Croatia and, and Bosnia, uh, finding the, uh, uh, trying to find the mines. Uh, now the mines, uh, what I really found that, uh, different is the uh, a typical mine, a tank mine, which, uh, how much is a tank? 54 ton, somewhere around there. Uh, the, the locals, and now they were made out of plastic, basically, uh, and they were bashed in, in a trick, so now a two ton or even a one ton vehicle would, uh, would blow up. Uh, and you can see them as you're going through the, uh, the mountains in, the, uh, in, in both countries that uh, evidently some of the patches of the asphalt were removed. Mines were installed and the uh, asphalt was uh, uh, reinstalled. So, uh, but we weren't that close. Uh, all the, the minefields were uh, earmarked uh, and uh, we didn't want to get close to that area. <coughs> so we... Um, so we left Calgary, um, well, just before I, I left, I, uh, since I knew that uh, my, uh, my term would be maybe up to one year, uh, personally, I had to, uh, to move the family out because uh, I was now in Edmonton for five years. I was told that I was being posted elsewhere. So in the weekends I was back, it was barely busy, so I took all my 10,000 pounds uh, furniture and stuff and uh, put all in, into storage. Uh, my wife didn't want to stay in Edmonton since we thought we were going to be posted. School year was coming as well so so she moved back to Quebec with her mom and then continued on for there on. So hopefully that, that would be posted. Actually the care manager said yeah you're, you're going to get posted. So okay that's fine so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So we uh, we left uh, 1st of September 95 uh, um, we landed in a split, a, a split Croatia, I believe. Uh, the bus ride to the airport was about 30 minutes to uh, the camp. 
Now, the camp that we were at, um, it was a, uh, a camping site. Uh, it was probably about a mile, about, about half a mile wide, right along the coast of the uh, Adriatic Sea. And uh, very close to split, uh, and we call this Camp Permushtan, Permushtan we're uh, the biggest uh, town close to that area. Uh, I had a look today, uh, or yesterday, that the camp is now a full active uh, camping ground, really, really nice. Uh, good fishing, uh, uh, sightseeing is very good. I'll show you some pictures uh, down the road. So the first, uh, the first thing I met, first guy I met, uh, was my brother. I hadn't seen my brother for about three years. <laughs> and I knew he was in Bosnia somewhere. I, uh, uh, he is an embassy operator. Uh, so he was uh, de delivering goods to the CPs, uh, the checkpoints uh, where the Canadians were. Uh, so we spent a week together and uh, we uh, took over the camp. Uh, the troops that were there at that time was the uh, uh, five service battalion and some vain dues from Valcarci. He was attached to Valcarci. He was an ambulance driver uh, in Valcarci. So it was quite uh, funny to see him there. I've seen him for many years. So, hmm. so we, uh, our job was mainly to maintain the camp, of course, uh, as, as the engineer, water, sa water sanitation, power. Uh, um, we knew that the, the, the mandate was coming up, so there was lots of unknown as to what we we're going to be doing afterwards. Uh, so we got wind that uh, uh, the CEO said, all right, everybody in the, in the mess hall uh, on the 10th of uh, December and announced us that, yes, the mandate was terminated on the 15th of December. And we were going to close the camp down or transfer the camp down to the next UN group. Uh, I'm not sure why they were UN, but they were Germans. So we, as the engineers, try to cap everything out, make sure that the, everything, the, uh, uh, all the, the services, uh, the facilities were um, functioning while well, these guys. So lots of work for us and to pack uh, out there. Um, while this was happening, um, uh, we uh, went out, uh, me, uh, myself, and a couple of uh, technicians, uh, we went out to uh, Bosnia, and our, our, our goal was to find a place for the new Canadians to uh, house the troops. So I believe it was a 2CMBG uh, that was uh, coming, uh, about a thousand troops, uh, no longer Blue Beret, so um, we weren't kind of welcome anymore having the Blue Beret, so we were told to not go too far away. Uh, nobody got hurt, nobody got shot, but uh, we were certainly uh, uh, looked at uh, because now we no longer was bringing any money in the country. So it was quite something uh, uh, to, uh, to have a look. So while we were, uh, we were uh, closing the camp, we uh, went out to uh, Zagreb, which was the UN headquarters. Uh, and I met my, my good friend, uh, Chris Whitecross. I'm sure everybody knew Chris Whitecross. At that time, she was a major. Uh, she was my boss in the, uh, way back. She was my boss. Too. Was your boss too? Yeah. So I, I got the, the documents uh, that I needed to, uh, uh, con some contract documents to uh, purchase some knickknacks, bolts, uh, steel, whatever. And uh, we, we went out there and we, we met our, our, uh, the, the company owners. We got our uh, uh, contract set up and all that. On the way back, we uh, stopped in this, uh, in this uh, bar for, uh, for lunch. And uh, so we parked our car on the side of the street and uh, we uh, came out of the, uh, the, the place and the restaurant and the, the car's gone. So uh, fortunately enough, uh, the translator was with me. So we said, well, uh, we got to find out where the car is. We're in the middle of Bosnia. I said, we, you know, nobody's going to help us out now with the Blue Beret. So we uh, made some phone calls around and uh, we found out that the car was taken away uh, into a, a storage area uh, for no reason. We weren't illegally parked or nothing. We just took the car away. 
because it was a, a white UN car. So they came up and they, they slugged the, uh, the car, put it on the flatbed and take it away. So it took us quite a while to find out where that, um, the car was, but uh, we did after a couple of hours. And uh, now we had to pay to get it out. And of course, we didn't have any <laughs> Yugoslavian money or you know, any, any type of money. Fortunately, the translator had their credit card and she, uh, she bailed us out. Uh, it was about $1,000 to get our car back. So anyways, we, uh, we headed back to the camp and uh, continued on with our, our, uh, our closing of the camp. Um, while the, uh, the camp was uh, being uh, closing, uh, we were tasked, uh, I was tasked to uh, go uh, into Bosnia and search for a new place for the Canadians. So we went into, uh, uh, we, we went into um, Bosnia. We, uh, on the way out there, we uh, came across a couple of groups. Uh, one of them was the, uh, the, Brit, the Brit camp. Uh, Brit Lug, I'm not sure what it called, was, uh, the, uh, it was uh, December 24th, so very close to uh, Christmas. Uh, so we were fully armed and you know, we, we met the, our counterpart, engineer counterpart, you know, had a couple of days there. And uh, the last night that we were on site, we had um, a group from the SAS, the uh, Special Air Service that came about fully armed and we, we were told we we were asked to put our weapons away our flak jacket away because you know we were safe in the way we were but these guys came in uh, out of a sudden bang 15 guys came in fully armed and uh you know they starting to drink pretty heavily they were on their way out uh, their their tour was done uh so 20 you know starting to uh having a few uh, brewskis and then they starting to shoot up in the air and of course, in their magazine, there is some, uh, some uh, tracers. So you can see tracers going all over the place and we didn't expect any return back, which did get some return back from the hulls. Uh, it, it didn't hit our camp, but uh, the, uh, we, we could see, so we were fired at, or fired upon. So we, are, we said, all right, we gotta get out of here. So, so we, um, we, uh, we got all of our, uh, our gear and got out and continued on. Uh, we uh, went to a couple of other UN camps. Uh, the camps were being uh, dismantled now because, of course, the UN mandate, uh, not only our mandate, our UN mandate, but everybody else's was completed and new force would be coming in. The I-4 would be coming in. So the picture is, this is the entrance of the camp uh, where we are at, uh, the uh, uh, Adriatic camp. Uh, sentry post uh, on the edge of the camp. Uh, this was the engineer, the engineer compound. We, uh, we were very close to the hills. Uh, this was a sea container up top on, with uh, uh, about 15 foot up. Uh, this was our, our, our CP, uh, our lookout. Uh, and we still had to do some uh, uh, look out, uh, making sure that uh, everything was okay. So uh, it was a fairly good area. Um, now, uh, uh, very little, uh, everybody wanted, to, from what we heard, everybody wanted to get to that camp. Uh, this was the, so we had, uh, we had put up a, uh, a net, a volleyball net, so the camp would, uh, would come down and uh, do some uh, volleyball tournaments. Uh, the uh, these uh, the white blocks. So there, there was our quarters. Uh, uh, two men per uh, per quarters. That's the main road into the camp. All the uh, the residential units all lined up. This is my group here. Fifteen guys or four, 13 guys plus the uh, translator. Uh, this was the city of uh, Primerston, which is, uh, we, I visited quite a few times. It was a really, really nice city, uh, a, a typical European city, old city. I think the, the city is about 1,700 years. Yeah. Uh, we also had, during, on the weekends, we, not that we didn't have anything to do, but uh, 
uh, SEAL asked us to uh, go out and uh, to help a couple of schools to uh, re re uh, rehook the power uh, and the and, and services and, and maintain the facility at this time. So we went uh, to a couple of uh, couple of places, a couple of schools. So by the time we uh, uh, the SEAL came to me and said, uh, "Well, we need to find a place. So we got we we got to get head out into Bosnia." So uh, we've done. Uh, we went all the way around um, into this area here. We, this is where our 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 area was uh, was given to us to find a uh, to find a new place. We did find one in Velika Kledusha, uh, which is uh, which is right in the valley. Um, once we got there. Actually, on the way out there, we uh, we were stopped at a checkpoint, and uh, there was a massive bunch of uh, uh, troops, uh, and they were all wearing guns. They all had guns, submachine guns, and uh, we were told stop. So we stopped. There were uh, one, two vehicles we had, and uh, we didn't have the translator, unfortunately, uh, but we we can't speak any of their language and then we and then we heard so holy shit we're getting we're getting shot at and so so what had happened is the it was a wedding and people were just shooting up in the air because of the uh, it was at the end of the war and the casings were hitting our truck <laughs> so we thought we were getting fired on so after about an hour we uh, resumed on our way out there so we were, we were really stressed on that time So this one in the camp where they were loading up all their, uh, their equipment, uh, I believe this one was a uh, can log map, Canadian Logistic Battalion. I'm not exactly sure where it was. Uh, uh, this is me with the, uh, I'm not, do you, do you know what type it's of? Buffalo, I think. Uh, yeah, so this is designed for the mines. It would go on top of the mines in the shape in the, in the, in the V format here. Yeah. Yeah. Very unstable. Very unstable, yes. Yeah. Very high center to have a high center of gravity. Yeah. So on the way out there, we cross a few towns, as you see now, even today on TV uh, with the Russia, all the, the bombed out and the damaged buildings. Uh, kids were uh, running around to our vehicle, uh, trying to get anything. We did have some candies where uh, uh, and toys that we left them on, on the way out. We did not stop. Uh, we just threw it at them. They were quite happy with that. That's exactly what we're looking at today on TV. <laughs> uh, we went, we saw a couple of uh, mine uh, minefields. Uh, they were fairly good. They were pretty well marked. Uh, we went into this uh, manufacture of uh, uh, lawn uh, uh, lawn furniture, and uh, it was fully mined, but I. Highly uh, indicative that there was lots of mine there, so we uh, it was a good place for the Kenyans to be. But of course, it was too many mines, so we said, "Well, we'll just continue on." So we ended up going to uh, uh, Velika Kledusha. So we got into Velika Kledusha uh, with my team, and uh, we, we knew our first assessment was uh, it was a very good camp for uh, about a, uh, for the, the group of coming over a thousand uh, Canadians. Uh, the camp or this this place was a uh, uh, a university a veterinary un university area. It had uh, big buildings. These are residential, but on, on we'll I'll see them later. Uh, there was an admin building, a computer a science building, and there was also a couple of other buildings where they would uh, have a livestock and dead stock for their training. Uh, all of this was gone. Uh, there was uh, no smell uh, or, or any equipment left. Uh, we took over the camp from the uh, UN uh, uh, group. I believe they were Indonesians. Uh, it was not the cleanest place that we moved into, uh, as we saw uh, tons of uh, uh, <coughs> mattresses. Uh, in one of the warehouse and we were told that hepatitis A, B and C were present. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't move in, we didn't go in there, we just uh, took some pictures and you know, making sure that we had enough room for uh, our next group. 
the uh, these are uh, generators I believe there was about 24 uh, APUs generating units out there um, only two of them were working uh, all the rest were seized up uh, and they were seized up because the uh, the group that was there prior to us didn't uh, do any maintenance. Uh, the U there was a UN maintenance crew that would be coming around to uh, do the maintenance on them, but towards the end of the war, nobody would come around. So uh, one of our first uh, job was to make sure that we had power, and so uh, our uh, generation electric generation technicians had the, you know they were working basically 12 hours a day just to make sure that we had enough power for for the camp uh, as you can see we're in the valley it, uh, it was a really really nice place hedgehogs, hedgehogs from uh, previous yeah uh, you can see this is the uh, grain containers or silos for the uh, the animals uh, the computer building over here, uh, the administration building here, uh, other types of building. Uh, and in our first assessment as well was to uh, uh, have a look and see if there's uh, any, uh, any mines or any uh, ordnance that was not, uh, that was still live. So we did tour around, even though I'm not a field engineer, I did call my buddy in Biatch and I said, you better come down here and have a look. So we did uh, score around the area. Uh, there was none. We were kind of kind of uh, lucky. Uh, another camp that we went to, there was still some uh, 250 pounds uh, mustard bombs that would not explode it. So they, uh, uh, we were lucky there's nothing out here. So, so we installed, uh, uh, so we had a look at uh, what type of services uh, was to the camp. This is after the uh, the Canadians came, but it was the same same situation. Uh, there was no power to the camp. There was other than our two uh, generating units. Uh, there was no water and there's no power. Uh, there's no sewer. Uh, we had nothing. Everything was cut down. So we had to uh, uh, find someone uh, close by to uh, to uh, see what could be done. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to uh, talk to the mayor. And you know, they weren't aware that uh, there was a, a big contingent that would be coming at that time. And uh, that you know, we needed the, eventually to have the, the power hooked up and, and all the services hooked up. So, and that's, what that, so and that's how we, when we left. So they were still building uh, a new building there, but it stopped just before the war. I, I, this one was the computer building. Uh, this one of the warehouse uh, after the Canadians came, of course, but uh, it was fairly big. Uh, lots of stuff was left behind from the previous uh, previous groups. Six wheel clouds, that takes yeah. pictures. So we, uh, after our first uh, initial assessment, we uh, we went back to the the camp and. Uh, and by, by the time that we related the information, uh, it was confirmed that, that this was our new camp, so Velika Kludusha, VK. So we, uh, on, the way, uh, on the way back there, uh, my guys now, uh, the camp was uh, totally uh, uh, acceptable for the Germans to move in. Uh, we did the handover to uh, our German, German counterpart. And um, uh, my guys and uh, the battalion moved into uh, a split into an hotel, and they took all our white vehicle and they painted them all green. So we uh, had no further problem. So uh, once this was done, I believe we left. Uh, it was the first of January. We left uh, on convoy all the way down to Velika Kladusha to. Uh, uh, to uh, Croatia and Bosnia and uh, ins uh, installed in a camp. Uh, a lot of asbestos present. Uh, obviously, asbestos present, there's no power. So a lot of work, a lot of work for us to, uh, to uh, make sure that uh, everything was safe for our, our new group. Now that took quite a while before these guys, uh, I believe that they perhaps were in, uh, in training already. Uh, most of them came from Gagetown, Petawawa, uh, and I think the Five Service Battalion was also part of that. 
CLDC containers uh, that they brought with, with them. So it was a big move. So on the way out there, uh, a couple <laughs> UN, uh, still white, I'm not sure what, from what contingent, but they got stuck and the uh, roads were fairly tight. And uh, we, we helped them out to, uh, to move that truck. Uh, Adriatic Coast, uh, if you ever get a chance to, uh, to go there, it was, it's probably, I, I've, seen, I've seen maybe 35 countries, and uh, I would go back there. Uh, it was a really nice country. The Adriatic Coast, all the way from, uh, uh, from Split to Dubrovnik, uh, previously used by the Germans during the war and by the SS, and so they built fancy houses and you can really detect the uh, the German architecture. I was in Germany for four years so you could really see yeah they were built by the Germans uh, and they were still occupied not by the Germans but they were still occupied so the uh, everybody wanted to be of course the Yugoslavian, ex-Yugoslavian wanted to be along the coast but uh, and we made it out all the way down to Dubrovnik uh, I'm not sure if you can see all these little black dots but these were all the, 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 uh, uh, the roofs that were bombed out. Uh, it was quite a bit. Uh, it, took, uh, it took them two years, I think, to uh, uh, repair uh, all, all, the, uh, all the buildings in Dubrovnik itself. So this, uh, uh, so the, 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 uh, we thought that, uh, that uh, 11 months was coming fast, but uh, it was only four months. So we came back to Canada, uh, uh, and uh, you know, we continued on. Uh, myself, I wasn't posted anywhere. Uh, the care manager changed over, uh, and I was gonna stay in Edmonton for five more years. I said no, as I've already been in Edmonton five years. And uh, family's away, furniture is in the storage. I said no, that's, uh, I, need a, I need to get out of here. Uh, didn't get the word, so that was my end of my career. 25 years later, uh, that's it for me. So uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, it was a good tour. It was lots of work, uh, busy uh, every day. There was no uh, hardly no time to uh, to look around. Uh, we've uh, visited uh, uh, quite a few cities that were bombed out, but there's of course nothing else to see. So. So that's about, uh, in a nutshell, as to uh, my, uh, my uh, short four months <laughs> into Bosnia. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, on the way back, uh, the CEO came to me and says, well, uh, would you want to go back? They said, why is that? Well, we got a position opening up. I said, no, nope. I've already been there, done that, and uh, so that, that'll, be, that'll be good for me. So that's it. That's all I, uh, my little trip. Well done. Thank you.